Hello, my dear friends and allies in the war on uninteresting things. Uh, <laughs> welcome to this, another exciting Max MSP tutorial. So, uh, last time we remember, we're looking at this multi-cube project, and I want to uh, extend that. So let's start by doing uh, what I like to call poor man's version control, and we will duplicate this project. So I'm going to take my multi-cube project, duplicate it, and name it something you know, creative and inventive, something updated and uh, revolutionary for the 21st century, like, uh, you know, Multicube 2. So Multicube 2, I'm going to open it up, and as you may or may not recall, it kind of looks like this. We had some cubes. Uh, let's make it so there's only 10 of them, not a 1,000 of them, or 100 of them, just for purposes of speed. East Funk Cubic, uh, position 12, and it looked like this. There are our cubes. And they are jumping around in space. And uh, I remember, I, we, we, maybe you agree, maybe you don't agree, but um, I don't think this is particularly interesting uh, just yet. And one of the reasons it's not interesting just yet is because the camera is static. And if you want to add, I mean, if you look at the Gantz graph video that uh, I'm trying to emulate, or indeed any video, uh, well, I don't know, a lot of videos, using the camera, moving the camera around is important, in an important way to add who knows, tension, dynamism, suspense, thrill, erotic wonder, uh, deep inner meaning, and all that uh, artistic garbage to your um, to your video. So if you want to be an artistic garbage man, basically, which we all, I think, do, then we need to add some camera controls. Uh, to make that happen, we're going to use basically the same exact strategy that we used to move these cubes around. We're going to use a jit.nm.drive object, only this time to control the camera rather than the cubes. Now. Before we do that, uh, we need to talk about moving the camera. So we do want to move the camera, obviously, that's no big deal. We want to move it from point to point to point in space. Uh, the only challenge with that is that I want the points to be, I don't want the points to be just anywhere in space. I basically want them to be at different points on a sort of sphere um, that contains these cubes. So I want to move the camera to different points on the sphere but I always want it to be the same distance from the cubes, looking towards the center at the cubes, but always somewhere on this sphere, at least when it stops moving. And to do that, we have to use uh, spherical coordinates. We're going to take random angles on this cube and turn those into points in space, x, y, and z points in space. And to do that, we're going to make use of the spherical coordinate system. And the Wikipedia page for the spherical coordinate system is great. Uh, it says sources remain unclear because it has insufficient inline citations. I mean, I say, fuck it, man. It's It's got, like, the two equations I actually need. Uh, it, the, I feel like Wikipedia pages sometimes, especially mathematical ones, need a TLDR, and this should would definitely be in the TLDR for this page. Basically, we're taking uh, random radius inclination azimuth and turning those into x, y, and z coordinates. So, to get those ra that random... Uh, radius inclination azimuth. We're going to start with a metro, as we usually do, a metro that will give us a new points every 1,000 seconds. And then we're going to use a jits.noise, one plane float 32 with dimensions 3 by 1, and jit.spill to turn this into a random, or a, a list of length 3 of random numbers in the range 0 to 1 want to handle each of those differently, so I'm going to unpack those into three floating points. And the first one, the radius, I always want to be uh, 1, and then I want to scale that by some value. I think a value close to 25 will be a good place to start, but I'll make it, I'll add a floating point box here so I can make that radius um, an arbitrary value that I specify myself. Uh, let's see, so that's the radius. Next thing that we're interested in, expert. Uh, what are we doing, expert, uh, is the uh, inclination. The inclination is a number between 0 and pi. So pi is about 3.1415. I know that's not exactly right. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, if you wanted me to type out all the digits of pi, we could be here a little while, um, certainly more than 10 minutes. And the uh, azimuth goes between 0 and 2 pi, so 6.283, just about. Cool. So there's our, there's our radius and our random uh, inclination and azimuth. And now we need to pack these up 
and turn these into uh, x, y, and z coordinates. So there's a different equation for each of those, and that's right here in the Wikipedia article down here. So let's do x per uh, f1 times, is it sine cosine? Yes, sine f2 times cosine f3. This is the x-coordinate. The y-coordinate is the same, except it's sine and sine. And the z-coordinate is the same, except it's the cosine of f2 rather than the sine of f2, and we don't worry about the azimuth. Cool. So there's our x, y, and z coordinates. Then all we need to do is pack these up into a nice list of three numbers, and then we will join these with a, uh, another number that will be the speed at which we move to that point. So zl.join, and a floating point number here to control the speed. Prepend move to. So now the point is going to jump. We'll jump to random points on this sphere. jit.anim.drive. And now we can move our camera. That's it. Done. Easy as that. Uh, so let's turn our metro on so it actually does this. And is everything working? I can't quite tell. No, because this is giving it zero seconds to move. Is that the problem? Yeah, cool. So now we're jumping from place to place, which is pretty exciting. Um, only problem is the camera is only occasionally looking at the actual spheres, or actual cubes, which maybe is a problem. Uh, but we can fix that pretty easily. As you know, I like to um, add a little space here between erasing the previous frame and generating the new frame. So we can have a send pre-render step in here. So we can do stuff before we actually render the frame. And in this case, that's really helpful because what we might want to do is just tell the camera to look at 0, 0, 0 before each frame. So I'll just throw that in here, attached to the camera. Now the camera is always looking at 0, 0, 0, even as it swoops from point to point. And right now the interpolation between points on the sphere is linear, and that kind of looks terrible. So let's throw the, uh, let's add an easefunk cubic over here. That should look a little bit sexier. Uh, let's play with some of these numbers. First of all, let's add 100 cubes instead of 10 cubes, because 100 cubes is way cooler. Give Max a million years to do something that a computer in 1995 probably could have handled. 3, 0 0.5, 50, he's found cubic. Let's make it so that this, yeah, let's see if this looks a little bit better. Uh, let's move these a little bit further from the origin. Make these cubes fly apart a little bit more. Um, let's make these fly even further apart. And go out really far from our cubes. Yeah, take a look at that. Actually, it's quite hard to tell what's going on because the cubes are moving so fast. So let's make the cubes move a little bit slower. Yeah, there we go. Uh, what does that look like? Too much. Try that. Cool. So there you go. Now you can see we've got this cool camera swooping from point to point. It's adding some interesting uh, dynamics and tension, and now we can talk about the um, existential angst of this scene. And maybe we could even do a feminist reading and talk about how the cubes represent, um, represent historical uh, phallistocracy and all that garbage. But in any case, um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, hope that was an educational, titillating, and informative as always, and um, look forward to more cool stuff. I think I'm actually really happy with the way this series is going. And I think we're going to be uh, reaching some really interesting visuals, even more so than this, uh, really soon. So, uh, yep, thanks for watching, guys, as always. Have an awesome one, and I hope to see you next time. Take it easy.